Let's bring in Mike Capone now, CEO of Click, usually based in the US, but joins us around the desk here at the SGX. Good morning to you, Mike. Thanks for making the time. So it, it's a very tough space that you are in because a number of uh, deals have fallen by the wayside, but you've been very acquisitive. Attunity in 2019, Big Squid in 2021, and now you're wrapping up Talent. What does talent bring to the table? Yeah, well, Sri, it has been a tough time in some regards, but no company is turning down conversations right now about how data and analytics can make their company stronger, better, more competitive. Going after talent just helps that story. Talent brings to our portfolio of analytics things like data governance, data quality, which become even more important in today's world as data becomes the backbone of almost everything we're doing. How do you protect that data for your clients? And how do you ensure that uh, you don't end up being collateral damage as uh, the US and China continue to butt heads? Uh, so one of the things, we only work in the, the corporate space, the government space. I think our partnerships are now more important than ever. No organization wants to put their IP, their data out into the public domain in some of these kind of, uh, these large language model AI generation tools without understanding what's happening. And so Click is in a unique position with our 38,000 enterprise customers to be able to actually help large corporations govern that data, secure it, have the lineage around it, and make sure they understand what's happening with their information. Mike, I've got to ask you, I mean, what do you do, uh, data analytics? It's essentially, to boil it down, uh, looking for patterns in data that can help inform decision making, right? So, I mean, look, th this isn't new. Human beings used to do it, and that's the basis of uh, essentially any good sort of intelligence operation as well. But now, rather than, uh, uh, you know, mainframes to crunch numbers and stuff, uh, you're starting to uh, use AI and apply it right. to that. What are the risks? Because AI, at least generative AI, that we've been mm -hmm. talking about for a couple of months now already, has a tendency, and there mm -hmm. have been very, very public uh, and also, uh, embarrassing episodes of, right. of AI getting it wrong. That's right. That's right. That's right, Martin. So, look, some things have changed, right, from the days of mainframes where I grew up yeah. to where it is today, where you've got almost unlimited computing power when you think about it with what's going on today. Um, and the reality is you have more data at your disposal than ever before. It's very accessible. A lot of the work we've done is actually to be able to harness all of that data. But, but the important part is you have to govern it. You have to bring it into, uh, you know, catalogs and curate it and make sure you understand it and know the lineage of it. And that's really what we're very focused on uh, because you're right, AI brings with it a lot of risks, false positives, mm, bias, yeah. things. Yeah, I heard Rich talking before about these things. Um, and our job um, as a provider and actually all of the corporate, the world's job is to actually bring this kind of governance and ethics to the AI conversation. So, so, so talking about governance, I mean, this is something that uh, the folks up at the G7 are, are talking about and will be talking about, uh, including at the at the summit coming up in Japan in about a, a week's time. How much governance is still lacking over AI right now? A lot, yeah. a lot. Uh, it, we're in early days. I think we've all learned the lessons of technology. You can't hold it back, which means it's incumbent upon all of us right now to make sure they're making the right investments up front in governing uh, this technology and governing AI. I think it's unrealistic to say, let's just take a pause and stop the development that if you look back in history, that's not something that really ever happens when it comes to holding back technology. It means companies like Click and our peers need to invest more now to stay in front of this. What kind of regulatory leashes are needed over AI? And do they end up being sort of a nice soft nylon lead <laughs> or more like a choke collar? I don't know. Well, it needs to be in the middle, just like everything else. I think there, there are tendencies to overreact around things like AI, uh, and what you really need to do is strike, strike a pause. And I think that's a, that's a conversation, right? That's a conversation with individuals and consumers. It's a conversation with people like myself and my peers in the industry who are in a position to see how fast technology is going on, and with other experts in the government. Um, and together, we can definitely find a middle ground that doesn't hold back progress, but make sure that progress is made in an ethical and honest way. Is there a tipping point, Mike? And by that, I mean, when you look back, AI, machine learning, data analytics, it didn't give us an early warning signal on the pandemic. It didn't give us an early warning signal on these profound supply chain disruptions that fouled up the world economy and gave rise to in inflation. At what point is the technology going to be enabled to give us those early warning signals about these profound economic and uh, health crises. Yeah. 
So I think the answer is today. I do think I do think we've reached a point now where we can build predictive models. Mm -hmm. the, the the problem with the the historical um, kind of business analytics technology is that it was looking backwards, right? So dashboards, um, historical data models, and people weren't looking in real time and didn't have the power of these predictive models. You think about uh, Suez Canal closing. No, nobody had a, a data model, like what happens if the Suez Canal closes. Well now, with the capabilities that companies like ClickBring and others, the ability to actually harness data, not just from all sources, but in real time, and then layer in some of this kind of AI, ML, auto ML capabilities, predictive models, you can start to, to actually see these things coming and you can start to build contingency plans around them. In terms of uh, the company itself, in terms of Click itself, you were a publicly traded company, you were taken uh, private by Toma Bravo in 2016. And correct me if I'm uh, wrong, Mike, you're looking at going back into the public markets again or uh, what is the plan? So you're correct in that we did take a look at the public markets back at the end of 2021. I think we all saw what happened to the public markets at the beginning of Indeed. last year. So we put that on pause, I think correctly so. And look, we like the hand we've been dealt. Working with Toma Bravo has been terrific. Uh, we, we're fine as a private company, and then you know we'll keep an eye on things when the markets are amenable to tech IPOs. We'll take a look again. No pressure in terms of funding to go public again. No, no, no. We have uh, we're very well capitalized. Okay, just one. Just had to ask. Listen, Mike, fantastic talking to you. Thanks for dropping by. I loved it. Thank you. Mike. Uh, safe travels. Uh, keep safe, and uh, we'll do it again very soon. My pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Mike Capone, there, CEO of uh, Click, joining us live around the desk here at the SGX.